Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here, and you are looking at my DLNA media server. Doesn't look like much. Basically, it's a normal computer running Windows 7, and uh, not much for horsepower and not much for memory inside this thing. I showed you guys a video of this a while back, and uh, yeah doesn't take much to run an in-home server just all how you configure it and what programs you use and I'm gonna get into a little bit of the programs that I use for running an in-home server now basically what you're looking at right now is four removable bays hot swappable and uh, right now I have a uh, 200 or a 2 terabyte and the top hard drive bay and basically that's all my media all of my videos family photos, everything that I use uh, for music and uh, backups. Now what these are are just removable bays that slide in and out. You could put a hard drive inside of here and basically just slide in, lock it in place, configure it to see that hard drive and uh, now you have a hard drive working in another bay. Now this is not much for, of a computer, it's basically running Windows 7. Um, there isn't much to this thing, it doesn't have a lot of memory, it doesn't have a lot of uh, horsepower as far as the CPU goes, it doesn't need to be. There is a separate hard drive inside here that has the operating system on it and some programs uh, for editing and other stuff that I use. Now this computer is not used for surfing the web or going online as far as checking your email goes and shit like that. Uh, it is strictly just a media server. Now you guys have heard me say quite a few times uh, Madsonic or Subsonic. Now, Subsonic is a program or a app that you would download to your Android device. They also have it for Apple devices, but on Apple side of it, you have to pay for this. Uh, on the Android side of it, it's free. Now, the problem with this is Subsonic for the computer, which is a free download but turned into a pay uh, software. I think they charge like a monthly fee now. In order to use it um but they have another program called mad sonic made by somebody else but basically it's the same thing it's free and it goes through the only problem with this is you have to set up your modem uh and open up a port and i think you have to change the settings for your firewall in order for this to work i noticed that it does work with uh security software so you don't have to worry about any problems with that I run Avast on my computer and I have no problems now you do have to open up a port uh, they kinda say like port 80 to open it and uh, for this thing as like a pass through so it can get on the internet and everything now I don't do that I use a different port and uh, port 80 is basically something that's pretty common and hackers also know it's pretty common so I don't have it set up that way. Now, as far as the modem goes, uh, you're going to have to know some basic networking configuration and stuff like that. And the nice thing about this is, this is the online part of the Mad Sonic. Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. And also, when you go to Mad Sonic's website or Subsonic's website, uh, you can. It also like fills you in on how to configure your modem to get this to work. Now a couple of problems that I have with my cable and internet provider is, is that they change my IP address uh, almost like fucking every three weeks, every two weeks they change this shit. And the problem with mine is, is you never know when they're going to change it. That screws up the uh, Android side of Subsonic to where uh, now I have to look up what my IP address is, put it back on my phone in the settings for Subsonic in order to get Subsonic to work again. Now, I'm gonna go through a little bit about Subsonic, which is pretty cool. You could set up different users and stuff. Now, this is basically what Subsonic looks like on the web-based part of it. So you're looking at Firefox opened up to the internet side of what Sub uh, Mad Sonic will look like. Now, when you go into your settings, you have a basically telling Subsonic what file or what folder to look at to share. Now, I basically have music, I have media, 
and then you tell it uh, how to index it, which there's different settings for the indexing part. Uh, it also does a scan for uh, new media, and I have mine set up for every day to scan for something new, just in case I added some new files to it. So you don't have to manually set up nothing as far as that goes. It'll automatically find and look for it and put it in its rightful place. So when you look at it on the uh, subsonic part of it on your Android device or mobile device, whatever, um, you'll see that it's there. Now for users, you can set up new users, uh, the, whoever owns or runs the uh, server is the one who's always by default the admin and uh, administrator of the uh, software. This way you have full control over everybody and, and what they're doing and how they're doing it. Uh, you basically give them, just allow them to play files basically. You can have them download if you, you know, give them that option to download files. You can give them options to change file names. Uh, I just prefer just to have them read only and that's it. Um, really there's nothing that needs to be changed. I tag everything that I have with album art, uh, also band art, and uh, you know, so there's really no need to change anything. Now when you have it um, basically go through the folder that uh, you point it to, it'll library it and it'll put it in a nice list all alphabetical order and this is basically everything that is on your server that you share <clears throat> with Mad Sonic for other people to see and to play or whatever the only bad thing about this is is if you do not have uh, say unlimited data on your phone tablet or whatever uh, you may run into issues where you you know no more data or if you're capped, even on your internet side, if your internet connection is uh, has a uh, cap on it, okay, and you have a lot of people that are streaming from you, um, that could cause a problem with your cap. You can reach that cap pretty quick. I have basically uh, unlimited data on my phone, and everybody that I know that I have linked up with this has basically unlimited data as well, so it's really not an issue, and I've got basically the highest speed internet that my internet provider provides. So that's basically how this is. It lists everything from A to Z or however, whatever you have, and categorizes it pretty nicely, keeps everything in order. Now that is the Windows side of things. Uh, it, this program, Mad Sonic, constantly runs in the background. It has to. And I also run a universal media server uh, that is networked through my house. So my Xbox, my uh, cable boxes, the home theater system, uh, including my TVs, also see everything that I share uh, through the universal media server, uh, which is basically family photos, videos, music, you know, anything. And it all will come up on all those devices that I mentioned. Uh, the nice thing about it is also uh, the DNA, DLNA uh, is also on my um, surround sound, my home theater system, and I'm able to link it to this directly and have everything that is in my media as far as music goes come up on my home theater system, my stereo. And uh, it's pretty nice to have. Now, the nice thing about this, which I don't have it set up yet, is a um, there's a website to, for this as well that you could sit there and be, you know, by somebody's house, another computer someplace else, and sign into and be able to play files off of that or even copy files, uh, download them to, your, to that machine as well. I don't have that set up. Basically, everything I have is just read-only, so it's basically, you know, people can listen to it, but they can't do anything else. Um, that would be only for my own personal use anyways uh, or you know a couple of buddies that I know if they you know interested in an album or something and you know maybe who knows but anyways uh, most of the photos and pictures and stuff like that as well I could take them with me without even having to have them all downloaded onto a hard drive or onto my phone uh, it'll all come up through from my server so I could be in another state log in and show family members photos of the grandkid you know growing up and shit so that's this part of the mad sonic and i'm going to get out of this right now
close that. I don't need to be in there. And everything is password protected. You know, everything is secured. So, you, you know, you don't sit there and put a very simple password into all this. You use something that is going to be uh, quite a few characteristics and stuff and, you know, makes it difficult to hack if somebody tries to hack you. Plus, there are security measures on this. Wrong password. Uh, if somebody tries to hack into it and they use the wrong password, you know, three times, um, they are permanently banned. That IP address will be permanently banned from trying to do anything further. So there are security measures that are in this that work out pretty good. Now, on the other side of things, and this is kind of why I don't have the, uh, I don't do the Hangouts anymore playing music because now I have the server and uh, I can just link everything up to my phone through Subsonic from the server and I don't have to, uh, you know, stream it through YouTube anymore. It was kind of cool, but, you know, maybe I'll do it every once in a while, but right now I've been using my phone, <coughs> excuse me, and it just works out a lot faster and a lot better. So this is my cell phone and this is what Subsonic which you could download it from the App Store on uh, Google uh, Google Play, I believe it is. And what this does is it basically has, you know, it's linked up to sub your Subsonic or Madsonic actually on your home server, and you give it a ser your, you know, server name. Basically, mine is Eric, um, which is not on the internet as, as being Eric, so it works out pretty good that way. Um, I'm not going to go into the settings of this because the settings will show, you know, how I'm linked and everything else as far as, uh, uh, you know, being connected to this thing with the address that I use. Because right now I have a address instead of using the, because the internet provider changes my IP address all the time, I don't use the IP anymore. Uh, I actually have a web address for this. And uh, this way, it's it's always linked up, and I don't have to worry about when they change my IP address through my internet and cable provider. That way, I'm good all the time, and I don't have to worry about it. So I'll go into library. So this is what the library looks like. Same thing as what the library looked like on the website for Mad Sonic. Now I got alternative, bass music, Christmas music, um, classic and hard rock, classical music, uh, various you know compilation discs. Freestyle House, Goth, Hardcore Hate, um, Heavy Metal, Thrash, Other Metal, Kids Music, Oldies, Rap, R&B, Soundtracks and Comedy, Southern Rock, and Other Country Stuff. I do like a little country. And then I have my Speaker Test CDs, which is the car audio stuff for setting up car audio uh, uh, head units, equalizers, amplifiers, shit like that. So I'll go into Classic Rock. So as you see, it comes up pretty quick. Doesn't take that long. Uh, as soon as it categorizes and everything on the internet side, where Mad Sonic is, Subsonic will work on the phone pretty quick. Now, as you can see, uh, the way I have mine set up is inside of each band folder, say Lynch Mob, uh, there is a photo of the band right next to it. It's kind of an option you can do with this with uh, Subsonic. I kind of like it like this, and it just makes the interface look a hell of a lot better. So if I click on Lynch Mob, so I got three albums and it shows the album art next to the title of the album. The only thing I don't like that what this does is it's not alphabetical order as far as my list goes. You know, it'll start at the A, but then go to H and then the L, then the S, you know. That's the only thing I don't like. Now I'm kind of wondering if the reason why this is is each one of these photos has its own name to it. It's stuck inside of the uh, band fold folder. And I'm thinking maybe it's reading off of the name. That's why it's not alphabetical order. So if I go into Lynch Mob, and it shows here's the album art next to it and the name of the band. Now the way I have this set up as well is that there is a year in the actual band folder. There is a year next to each album. So that on the in, on the uh, folder side on the hard drive of the computer, that'll put everything in order. This is not in order by album, by year, uh, but the years are there. So if I click on, you know, uh, let's see, Wicked Sensation. Shows up with the album art at the top, Wicked Sensation Lynch Mob. Um, it also has the year somewhere inside of here. It does put the year because the years are in the tags. And you can see I have my shit set up as variable bitrate. Now the album 
every song is basically listed as it would be on the CD or the actual record. So if I hit play all, this is what the interface looks like once it's playing music. So you have a large picture of the album art and you have your play buttons, pause, fast forward, rewind. Um, you can also go into settings, you can also go into uh, info of the music. Now there also is like um, a record on here, um, there's an equalizer that Subsonic comes with. I don't use them. Uh, this phone is an HTC, uh, what is it, HTC One M8 or something like that, the Harman Kardon edition. So it's got pretty decent sound. There are stereo speakers on the front, one on the top and one on the bottom. Kind of a nice phone. I was thinking about upgrading it, but uh, you know, I'm going to lose the stereo function, which is kind of nice if you're watching YouTube or YouTube videos. You have the speakers right there in front of you instead of being on the bottom or behind, you know, on most phones. So that's basically it as far as uh, how the Mad Sonic and Subsonic kind of work together. Uh, now this is, you could put it on any Android device. Uh, again, if you have a window or, uh, sorry, a Apple device, it doesn't kind of work quite as well. You have to pay for the program. Also, if you have a, another computer, um, the way I have this set up as well, is basically each computer is set up through into the network um, with the uh, server that way all the computers in the house are linked to it as well my computer my personal computer my laptop is the only one that can edit files and change anything that's on the server the rest of these computers are only read only so that's it uh, you know once you get the it, Mad Sonic will help you. Uh, there are different information that you can find online as far as Subsonic and Mad Sonic, uh, how to set up your your cable modem or your uh, uh, internet modem. Depending, sometimes they're cable modems and sometimes they're internet modems, where you have your cable line going through into it and then your TV's out, you know, from that modem itself. I think AT and T was set up this way. Uh, this one here is not. Now. It'll list on how to set up, what settings you need to go into on your modem to set it up to open up the port. Again, I don't recommend using port 80. Uh, you can use basically, uh, you know, a higher number up, and uh, it just it works out better that way. Um, also, with the way this is set up, uh, as far as the port that's open, uh, there is a variances between port numbers which allows me to basically have uh, like more than 20 people, 30 people on this thing at the same time and nobody is going to choke as far as the quality goes of the music or any problems like that goes. So this thing is working pretty efficiently. So that's it. That's uh, you know a DLNA server and uh, running Universal Media and uh, Mad Sonic music streamer. It works pretty good. Um, I'm not going to go into any of the settings or how to set it up and stuff. It's pretty self-explanatory uh, on the internet as far as the website goes. So you guys take care. Have a good one. And uh, oh yeah, by the way,